Just thinking about it sends a chill up my spine. Right now, a serial killer is stalking his next victim in New York City. Watching, waiting, ready to strike. No one's sure how many women he's murdered, but more bodies are turning up by the day. The killer uses the internet to plan each move and lure his victims. A modern, methodical psychopath. But for the man they've dubbed the Long Island Ripper, murder isn't enough. He's taken to taunting his victims' families in the cruelest way possible. New York City and its iconic skyline. As cities go, this concrete metropolis is the star. But down in the shadows of those soaring skyscrapers right now, hidden among the Big Apple's eight million residents, is a ruthless, calculating serial killer. So far, police have discovered the skeletal remains of nine and possibly 10 victims on the remains desk. of two more women. One has the latest shocking find along Ocean Parkway, the second discovery of human remains in just a few hours. This individual is planning these things out, and that makes him extremely dangerous. This is an individual who has this whole thing thought out and thought through, how he's going to do it, where he's going to do it, where he's going to get rid of the body. New York is where the serial killer preys on his victims, and this is where he dumps the bodies, the windswept bush and driftwood beaches of Long Island. It's an easy drive from the madness of Manhattan, an ideal weekend getaway, but it's now taken on a sinister new identity with the discovery of bones, body parts, and shallow graves. Teams of searchers painstakingly hunted for victims of the serial killer, whose work has stumped investigators since the first four grisly finds. So far, 11 bodies have been discovered. Four of them now officially listed as victims of this serial killer that's been dubbed the Long Island Ripper. But today's hunt uncovered more remains, including a skull. When they found the bodies, we were actually watching TV. And they described, you know, about five foot tall. And we looked at each other and just started crying. We knew it was her before we even got the official phone call. It was confirmation of Lynn Bartholomew's worst fears. Her missing daughter, Melissa, was in fact a victim of this serial killer. What sort of a, a, a girl, a young woman was she? Very energetic. She was always happy. She loved to do hair and she graduated top of her school. 24 year old Melissa Bartholomew grew up in Buffalo, upstate New York. She dreamed of opening a beauty salon in her hometown, but not before she lived a little. Melissa packed her bags for the bright lights of the Big Apple. What drew her to New York City? She kind of got hooked. All that fast hustle and bustle, and she was like, wow, I can go down there and I can make a lot of money, and then I can come home and I can open my own salon and buy a house. That was her dream. Melissa did end up making a lot of money, but it was far from a dream. She became a stripper, then a call girl, career she kept hidden from her mum. I was terrified that she was there because she was so tiny and, you know, just such a loving person. You know, I just thought the people would eat her alive. Melissa advertised her services on Craigslist, a website which sells everything, including sex. It seems this is how the Long Island Ripper found his victims, who were all escorts. Finding the bodies in this thick and tangled bush was both a blessing and a curse. Police now knew they were dealing with a serial killer, but there was no way he'd be returning to this spot. His secret dumping ground had been found. However, investigators believe that in some way, it might challenge him, make him more hungry to kill again. Why do you think the Long Island killer targets prostitutes? One of the hardest problems for a sexual murderer isn't the abduction, to get a woman, to get a victim to go along with him. 
In prostitution, that problem is eliminated because prostitutes will go along with anybody. That's part of their job description. Dr. Lou Schlesinger has studied serial killers for more than 30 years. He's an expert profiler, one of a handful of forensic psychologists trusted by the FBI. In many of these cases, there's a symbolic significance to the offender with prostitutes. And in their mind, they sometimes rationalize that they're ridding the world of this type of evil. Morally, he thinks he's some kind of crusader. Some of them are hyper-moralistic. And so um, the prostitute then symbolizes to them fear and anger and all sorts of emotions attached to sexuality. America has a perverse history of these twisted serial killers, so-called ordinary men who commit unspeakable crimes. Like Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, he confessed to more murders than any other American serial killer. Over three decades, he murdered 48 prostitutes in desolate bush areas. Finally caught, he was almost proud of his work. Guilty, 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 guilty. These guys have two prominent traits, narcissism and psychopathy. Narcissism is somebody who is incredibly egocentric and self-centered, can't get enough of themselves. Psychopathy is a little bit different. That's an individual who has no interpersonal bonding with others. Please welcome Rodney Alcala. Rod, welcome. Another serial killer, Rodney Alcala, had a huge ego. He became known as the dating game killer after he went on a TV show in the late 70s, right in the middle of a killing spree. We're gonna have a great time together, Cheryl. Okay. And although this lady wasn't one of his victims, others weren't so lucky. Alcala was sentenced to death only last year for five murders in California alone, but is suspected of killing and photographing as many as 50 more of his female victims. Serial sexual murderers look like the rest of us. They talk like the rest of us. They behave like the rest of us. Many of them work, most blue collar type jobs. Some are unemployed, but some have uh, fairly good jobs. Um, and that's just what the reality is. They're extraordinarily ordinary in terms of their everyday life, but their sexual deviancy and the way they acted out is clearly extraordinary. And it's undoubtedly the same with the Long Island Ripper, to the sheer heartbreak of Melissa Bartholomew's family. But there's a very sick twist in this story. After the killer had dumped Melissa's body, he kept a souvenir, a trophy, her mobile phone. And from here in busy Times Square, he went through her contact list, found her sister's number and started calling her. Melissa's missing and we're all worried and freaked out. We haven't heard from her. And Amanda gets this call and caller ID comes up Melissa. And she answers the phone and there's a guy on the other end. I hear a man's voice and I just like, my whole body like shut down like I was just in shock. It was the first of several taunting calls the serial killer made from Melissa's phone to her sister Amanda. She's the only one who's heard his voice. It's left her terrified of revealing her full identity. How would you describe the conversation? Playing games with me, pretty much. It was like every time my phone would ring, it was him. It was another clue to maybe getting closer to catching him. How would you describe how this man sounded? He was just very calm. I asked myself all the time why he called me. Why do you think? Just to torture someone else because I think he enjoys it. What was he getting out of this? I don't know, he's sick and twisted. Maybe something in Amanda's voice, you know, because she was hysterical, she was crying. You know, she tried to keep calm, tried to keep him on the phone long enough. The final call was that he killed her. 
Each time, the killer makes the calls brief. Police can't pinpoint the exact location, but they have traced them to busy areas of central New York. It was from around here where the serial killer made one of his telephone calls to the victim's sister. Does that surprise you at such a public place? No, in fact, it would probably be very typical. Uh, this is an individual who fits right in. He looks like everybody else. Um, he's not a wild beast that you could recognize as being particularly dangerous. What's he getting out of it by making that phone call? It's a display of his sadist and cruelty. This is very arousing to him. This is sexually stimulating to him to have him know what he did to the victim and then to taunt the victim's family members. So we knew, like, there are crazy people in the world. It's just a nightmare. I have dreams all the time of her being here. Cherie Gilbert's sister, Shannon, was also an escort and also advertised her services on the internet site Craigslist. The last time Shannon was seen alive was on Long Island when she made a panicked call to police before disappearing. This is the client's house that my sister was last seen at on May 1st. And it was in here where she made the call to police? Yes, she first made the phone call to 911 in this house. What was she saying? What did she say in that call? She was saying, um, help me, help me, he's trying to kill me. The man who booked her services and owns this house has been questioned several times by police. Prayers go out to the families. So has a neighbour, a former police surgeon who's volunteered three interviews with investigators. But police believe the killer is still out there. I can't imagine who would do such a horrible, you know, mean thing. This lonely stretch of road is not giving up its secrets. It was Shannon's calls to police that eventually led to a search on Long Island and the discovery of the bush graves. But painfully, for her sister and mother Mary, Shannon's body still hasn't been found. How do you describe this place? It's just evil. It's evil. There's so many lies and, and, and sin and sickness here. It's, it's, it's just creepy. It doesn't matter what they did for a living. They're still all beautiful girls. And they were very young and they had a lot of life. As police continue to search the area for more bodies, the Long Island Ripper is still out there. And like all serial killers, he won't be able to control his instincts forever and will almost certainly strike again. He's going to make a mistake. They all do. And we're going to get this guy. Coming up. My hand was not on the trigger. Convicted of murder. I really feel like the jury should have known everything. But it might not be case closed for Greg Lynn. It's a nutcase. What are the secrets hidden in his past? It's his wife treating her like an animal. What decent person does that to the mother of their children? That's next on 60 Minutes.